Malaria is the main tropical disease in the world, affecting 15% of the world population in 80 countries. The disease is transmitted by plasmodium, injected in the blood by a mosquito, the anopheles having previously stung a person with the disease. Despite its spreading over the whole world, medication remains costly, give rise to resistances, and are dangerously replaced by counterfeits. A natural solution is offered by the Artemisia annua, an herbaceous plant of the Asteraceae family. It was always cultivated in China for its numerous uses, and today also in Africa. Its tea infusion cures malaria and gives hopes to finally help eradicate this terrible plague. This video explains the cultivation of this requiring crop. Artemisia requires very fine soil. Sift the soil throughout the strainer or wicker basket. Artemisia seed being very small, one needs to pass through an intermediary step. Sterilize the soil throughout the method called solarization. This method destroys all microorganisms and weeds in the soil throughout high temperatures. Place the pan with the humid soil under a plastic sheet in the full sun. Prevent rainwater to penetrate by using a plastic sheet without holes. After five or six days, or more under covered sky, take away the sheet and discard weeds. Then pass to the next step, sowing. For better seed distribution, they must be mixed with sand. So, mix one part of seed with stand of sand and mix well for an even distribution. The nursery can be made in whatever container, but the best is to use cheap recycled material. Take for instance a plastic 5 liter bottle. Open up over its fuel length, that will determine the area of your nursery. Pierce about 10 holes in the bottom, that allow water to penetrate into the bottle. Fill it with sift soil and level the surface to have compact soil. Then, place the nursery into a bucket with water. Irrigation through capillarity consists of placing the nursery in a larger bucket with water. The soil and the seed will pump the water they need throughout the holes you pierced. The level of the water should not be too low to avoid having to water too often, nor too high to avoid drowning the soil and hence the seed. Keep 15 cm between the surface of the water and the seed, verify regularly that the water has not disappeared, and according to the surrounding, add a net to avoid bad experiences. Dispose the mixture over the well-prepared soil. Cover the whole surface and cover with a very light layer of soil. Seed must always see the light and will germinate after a few days. Artemisia plants will grow fast. When the plants have reached 4 cm height, or when they start touching each other, they must be separated into individual pots to allow them to grow better. To protect the environment, use plastic bags like used water containers. Fill the bag with sifted soil after having discarded its top and compress the soil. If you use irrigation by capillarity, 
pierce two to three holes in the bottom with a sharp needle. Take delicately an Artemisia plant, for instance with a spoon, and don't hesitate to take sufficient soil to avoid hurting the delicate new shoot. Transplant the plant into the pot after having made a small hole to welcome it. Add delicately some soil to stabilize the plant. Then put the pots back into the pan with water. After raking the soil, superficial plowing, wedging, and watering, make a hole for each plant and transplant with the soil around the woods. Compact the soil, avoiding to cover or hurt the young plants. Plants must be spaced 80 cm apart and they need watering twice per day. Adapt your planting calendar so that plantation in the field coincides with the beginning of the rainy season. Artemisia annua has also a repulsive effect on the mosquitoes. So if it's possible, plant near the buildings taking into account the direction of the wind. When the plants start to flower two to three months after plantation in the field, it's time to harvest the plants. It's indeed at that moment that useful components content are the highest. Cut the plant at the base and cut it into small pieces. Put a plastic sheet under the plant to collect falling seeds. Put it all to dry in the shade, not in the sun, until it all appears to be dry. Beware, before cutting the plants, identify the nicest plants that will supply the seed for your next crop and leave them standing. To harvest the seed, cut the plants previously identified. Once they are cut, put them in a pan or plastic bag to trash the plants to collect the seed or wait patiently that they fall in the container. Once they are separated, store them away from the sun and humidity before starting a new cultivation cycle. Another reproduction method is through cutlings. It is done by cutting a healthy growing branch, cutting the top so that the stem is 15 cm long, and discarding the leaves at the base with only three to four leaves remaining at the top. Then, put it into the containers of your choice or directly in the field. It takes one to two weeks before woods and the first new leaves appear. The last step before consuming the leaves of Artemisia is the preparation of the tea. For one cup of tea, you have to boil the water and add a spoon of three grams of tea. For preventive treatment, you need to take one cup per day during seven consecutive days. During the next 21 days, you need to take the tea less frequently, but at regular intervals. To treat a malaria outbreak, you take three cups a day during seven days. This duration is imperative, despite noticeable improvement of the patient after three to five days. This duration is needed to avoid relapse and eliminate all plasmodium from You can the also take a cup on days 14 and 21 to ensure that all plasmodium is eliminated. This video stops here. We now consider that you can cultivate Artemisia annua and utilize it efficiently. So, cheers.